Thank you for watching this Deer Systems tutorial. In this video, we'll take a look at the Automation module. To access the Automation module, navigate to Settings, Automation. The first section in the Automation module are Mailing Lists. Mailing lists can be used to group together company or external contacts so they can easily be notified. To create a mailing list, select the plus sign and then enter a name for the mailing list. Next, you'll be able to enter the email addresses to be included in the mailing list. Note that you can add emails in either a list or a table format by changing the option here. Also note that existing company contacts can be added to an already created mailing list when they are added to the company contacts in Settings, Reference Books, Company Contacts. The next section is Notifications which enables Deer to notify you when different events occur. To enable a notification, first select the category or the module the event takes place in. For example, select Sale to see all sales related notifications and whether they are active or disabled. Click through to a notification you wish to configure. Here you can switch on the notification by toggling the button on the top right corner to active. Dear notifications can be delivered as alerts in the Notification Center or emails sent to one or more recipients, as well as external notifications used for API users. More than one of these actions can be selected for each notification. To enable an action, click the button for that method to activate it. Some notifications do not support all delivery method types. If the notification type is supported, a toggle for that method will be available in the Action section of the notification. Enabling an action will activate a message template field below. Each action for the same notification can have a different message template. Internal notifications are delivered to all dear users in your company. These notifications are sent to the Notification Center on the top right corner of the screen. This is represented by the bell icon. You can configure the message template and see the internal execution log from here. Clicking the Notification button displays the most recent notifications with a link to the relevant details and the date and time the notification was triggered. Notifications can also be delivered via email using this option. Several default options are available for email delivery. If all active users are enabled, the notification will be sent to the email of every registered user in your organization. If all company contacts is enabled, the notification will be sent to all email addresses listed in Reference Books, Company Contacts. You can also select a mailing list you've created earlier. Extra recipients can be added in the BCC field. If Sent to Customer Supplier is enabled, the notification will be sent to the default customer or supplier contact or B2B user. Custom messages can be entered into the message field. Use parameter names in your notifications by clicking on the corresponding buttons. The parameter name will be saved to your clipboard and can be pasted into message template, email subject or email template fields. External notifications let you notify third-party applications about events occurring in Deer. For example, you can set up a notification about the change in a quantity of goods and this will allow you to receive data about a product change in a third-party service or your own application. Note that external API calls are not supported for all types of notifications. For more details on external notifications and the API, please refer to the Deer Knowledge Base. Now let's look at report scheduling. Reports can be scheduled to run daily, weekly or monthly and sent to those who need them directly from within the automation module. Note that you need to create a mailing list before you can schedule a report. To schedule a report, select the plus button on the top left. The new schedule report pop-up will appear and include the three stages of report setup. Start by enabling your report by toggling here. Then, give your report a name and select the report you are wanting to generate. In the second stage, you are able to select any of the custom layouts you previously saved for that report, as well as the period of time which the report will cover and any bespoke options for the report type selected. In the final stage, select the desired start date and time. Then, the frequency the report will operate at, noting that beyond the standard options, you also have the ability to set custom amounts of days. 
Then select the mailing list to which the report will be sent, and choose the format of which the report will be sent as. Finally, select Save to complete the setup. The report's generation log will contain the history of all the generated reports, including the date, time, and their format, as well as giving you the ability to download the reports by selecting the Download button on the right-hand side. The next section is Reminders. System reminders can be set on pending tasks that require your immediate attention. Any reminders you turn on in this list will appear in your Dear Dashboard. The Reminders portion of your dashboard presents each of the reminders enabled. It also shows a count of each of the records that meets that criteria, and acts as a direct link to the list of those records. The next section is Workflow, and that's covered in a separate video. Finally, we have Tasks. The Task module works in conjunction with the Deal Automation module and allows you to set up workflow processes for a purchase, sale, supplier, customer, credit note, assembly, or disassembly. Before you can use Tasks, you need to set up the Task settings. Set the Task module to Active, and then click Save. Now, we can move on to creating Task Categories. Categories are used to separate and filter different types of work assigned to your users. To set up task categories, select the plus, and then give your new category a name. Then, a label color if desired. Next, we can customize your working schedule via the calendar tab on the left. Here you can change the first day of the week from the default of Sunday, as well as designate your specific weekend days. You're then able to add holidays via the add holiday option by selecting a date, giving the holiday a name, and choosing whether you want any workflow logic to skip assigning tasks on these days. Selecting Save when done. Once task categories and notifications have been set up, you can begin creating your task workflows. Task workflows are used to assign multiple templated and sequential tasks to an object quickly. Workflows can contain as many steps as required, and can be renamed and changed to fit your organization's needs. Before starting a workflow, you'll need to make sure that any desired notifications that interact with the workflow are enabled. Then, select Plus to start a new workflow. By default, a workflow is set to Active. Toggle the Active button to make the workflow inactive after creating it. Give the workflow a name, and select the type of records the workflow is applicable to. You're then able to define how the due date is calculated by either the previous task due date, or the start date of the entire workflow. This is used below when creating the sequence of tasks in your workflow. You're also able to select a notification that will start running the workflow. If a notification is not used, the workflow can be added to the object manually. Optionally, select a notification which will end the workflow before it finishes. For example, you may have a workflow of tasks to work on a quote, that is ended early if a customer declines the quote. To add a task to the workflow, select the Plus Task button. Then, enter a name for the task, select a task category, assign the task to a user, and enter the number of days when it becomes due. Then, choose the logic for the task if it encounters a holiday or weekend date. This can be Skip, or Logic to move to another date. Then, select the start and end times as required, and repeat the step until you've created all the tasks for your workflow. Now that tasks have been created, you'll be able to add tasks and task workflows to any of the applicable Deer objects mentioned earlier. For example, here within a simple sale, you'll see the task menu on the top right hand corner. From here, you can select the plus icon to add a task manually for a user, or the plus workflow to assign a full task workflow. After selecting Add, you can give your task a name. Set its date, and whether it's an all-day task. Assign a task category and its user, and then give the task a description if needed. Then, select Save. The user is then able to complete the task by selecting it from within the task menu of the sale, but they're also able to see and complete all their associated tasks from the calendar view found in the top right-hand corner of Deer. From the calendar view, you're able to filter by object type, task categories, as well as users assigned. You're then able to open any of the tasks to mark them as complete, as well as use the link to navigate to the task associated object. 
And that concludes this video on the automation module.